it's me, Mr. Moose. Welcome back to Hesford Disneyland. Um, it's been a second, quite a bit of a second. Um, I've been very, very busy recently in terms of with theater. I also got really, really sick and I'm still pretty sick. And uh, on top of that, I also had, a, I had to go see family across the country over Christmas. So I haven't been able to get a video out. I've been playing quite a bit, um, especially over Christmas break, the first part of Christmas break when I was sick and I wasn't working. I played a lot of Planet Coaster um, and mostly played in this park, played a little bit in some of my other parks too, and I'll do videos on them at some point. Uh, but I will stop rambling, and as you can tell, there are already some differences um, out here. I have done a lot of shoring up and a lot of changing, and one of those things is these ticket booths. They are a little rough around the edges, and you can definitely tell they are bean buildings, but I love them. Um, and they, 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 are, they sit as ticket booths out here, but I also have a couple um, that are vendors uh, in the park, especially around the Main Street USA area. Top of that, you notice the old ticket booths are gone and it's now a more open esplanade. Um, the gazebo stayed, but all the planters around there are gone because they just were cluttered. They cluttered the space. Um, we also have these guest relations building now. Now, guest relations buildings now um, because we used to not have them uh, and you kind of need them. Uh, but yeah, they, they definitely anchor this area make it look a lot better uh the turnstile or not the turnstiles uh the magic band waving areas are the same but we bricked out this entire area right here and as you can tell we curved around the train station planter and it was a detail i wasn't going to do but after i spent you know a couple hours doing it oh my lord it makes it look so much better so much more disney-esque um these benches right here are stolen from swiss's uh his version of the train station. So if you're watching, I did steal these. If you want me to take them down, leave a comment. Um, same with those and then these planters right here. I just, I took them, I'm sorry. If you want me to take them down, I'd be happy to. Um, but yeah, so that's all for out here. And if we go in to the park itself, uh, <laughs> it looks really stupid from the ground. It looks good from the air, but now that I'm on the ground, it looks stupid, but I added this thing to the the gazebo, but now that I'm on the ground, it looks really dumb. Uh, the fire station is in, um, as well as the back of the train station has also been updated. <sighs> let's see. Um, all right, let's go over to the castle. The castle has seen minor changes and updates like it normally does. Mostly the planters around the side and just the overall surrounding uh, foliage and rock work and area in general has been spruced up. We added this little tower right here has been added. Um, I don't know, I just felt like it was missing something right there. Um, for the most part though, the castle on the exterior is the same. However, when we go inside, the interior has been completely changed. Um, I was inspired by Zeev. In fact, he posted his pictures and his park file probably about four hours before I completely redid the interior of my castle. But anyways, you walk into the castle, you have the chandelier and the ceiling. You can meet Aurora or Mickey or Elsa or whoever is going to be right there. Uh, since this is Sleeping Beauty Castle, I put Aurora there. The walkthrough is still basically the same for the Sleeping Beauty story. It's just moved over here. And we also have the first full restaurant. I don't know what it's going to be called, probably just the Castle Restaurant. Maybe be our guest, but I doubt it because it's not in a Beauty and the Beast castle. Um, and there's even a little, and this was also taken directly from Zeev, uh, my own version, of course, just inspired. Um, there is a uh, balcony up here, and I can imagine the reservations to get into this tiny restaurant are probably insane. Um, in Fantasyland, I don't believe much, well, okay, yes, there's a major change right there. I'll get into that in just a second. Um, that is a placeholder building. It's not mine, it's a placeholder, so ignore that. Uh, we added a fountain and I redid the, uh, cover for the teacups. Part of me wants to do what they do in Disneyland and just have it extremely, like, foliaged and stuff around, uh, but, uh, I don't feel like it. So, I had built a dark ride 
theme to Anastasia, which is technically a Disney property, um, but I took it out just because I couldn't get it to work the way I wanted it to. Um, I need to stop moving the camera. I'm sorry, I'm probably making you motion sick. Um, I say I'm a lot. I'm sorry. Uh, so let's go through. This is a cut through path now to Frontierland or Colorado Country, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we moved some of these buildings over here and did a bunch more and basically copied a bunch of buildings from Grizzly Gulch. Um, this is technically, uh, the town is Grizzly Gulch. Um, am I, I'm auto saving, hang on. Do it. Oh, okay, I'm back. Um, but yeah, no, it's basically, it's basically Grizzly Gulch. Um, and you may notice something, that something is a bit different over here. That's because this coaster was completely redone. Um, now it is, it went from a Big Thunder Mountain, bad Big Thunder Mountain copy, to now it is a completely original Runaway Mine Cars. It, it's probably not gonna share, it's not gonna be called Big Grizzly Mountain, it's gonna be called Big Thunder Mountain. Um, even though the mountain is meant to look like a bear, you can't tell from right here, but if you go over there or over there, it looks like a bear. Um, but yeah, it is, as you can tell, it has the Seven Dwarves uh, swinging cars, which I thought was awesome because I wanted to do Seven Dwarves, but I thought the cars didn't look right. But then I thought, you know what, I'm just going to redo this ride, put it here, and I love this thing so much more. It's so much better, makes so much more sense, and is so much more realistic. Um, we even have the geysers from Grizzly Gulch here. Uh, this is going to be another little area. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, um, exactly, but... It's pretty small, but I'll figure it out. Anyways, yep. So this ride has a launch. It has, it, or it has two lift hills and a launch. Um, I wanted to do a backward section like it does on Big Grizzly and on Everest, but um, of course, Planet Coaster being the worst, you can't do that. Um, I will show a POV of this at the end of the video, but for the most part, this ride has actually been, for the most part, completed. Um, it even has its full queue done with fast pass and everything. You know, it, it still is a little rough around the edges, but yeah. Um, so the main thing with the queues that you might notice in most of the rides here is that they are very short, and that's on purpose. This park isn't meant to be like Anaheim or Orlando, where it's a massive, massive crowd draw. It's just meant to be a small... It's meant to be a park that doesn't bring in a ton of crowds, and it's meant to be more calm and almost like Disneyland Paris in terms of like a nice evening stroll. Um, so we come out here into the Cape Harbor area. You might be able to notice the buildings have been scooched back quite a bit to open up more room for walking. Uh, I'm trying to think what else is new over here. Uh, oh yeah, so this, the town hall, or I guess, I don't know what you'd call this. The theater, it's gonna be a theater, but it was moved over and we added another little like Cape Cod-esque building here just to move, distance that from the town hall. And it does, it, the little bit of moving does help. Um, we sunk in the ship because I realized it was like not realistically floating in the water. Uh, for the most part though, Cape Harbor has remained the same. But when you come around the bend, might be able to notice a mansion on the hill that may or may not be a haunted manor. Um, so this was done, and this is being done by my buddy Nitro. He's doing basically everything for it, um, and he gave me the facade. I did dress it up a little bit because I was in the mood for haunted mansion stuff, so I did dress it up a little bit the way I wanted it. I'm probably going to leave it like it is for now and let him finish it because it's his thing. But, yeah, I think it looks really good, and it really fits the area, and it's kind of creepy. Um, I haven't found a 100% for sure home for the lighthouse yet, but it is going to be in the park. Um, now if we come around here, you might be able to see something over there. Splash Mountain moved. Um, it moved from way over there in Frontierland to now it's in its own spot um, of Critter Country, which is not done at all. But, uh, I will also have a POV of this at the end, because it is pretty, pretty done, for the most part. Um, it, it's very rough around the edges, 
Um, but of course, this is a ride that you can't really see a whole lot from the midway. So I'll throw in a POV at the end. Uh, but yeah. So other than that, we have one more thing, and that is going to be Tomorrowland. Uh, Tomorrowland hasn't seen a whole lot of change. It's mostly seen upgrades. However, you may notice uh, the Astro Orbiter or Orbitron is different. It's a completely different ride system now. It's much better, much smaller, and fits the area much better. Um, we also added this little restaurant over here. I'm not sure. I think I might go back and redo it because it just looks kind of dated. It looks dated. So what I'm trying to go for with this Tomorrowland is basically I want a romanticized version of the retro future. So when I say retro future, I mean between like the 60s and 80s, that sort of future that you see in the Disney parks, I want that, but I want it romanticized. Um, almost like Fallout, like pre-war Fallout, uh, but much more space and bleh stuff. Uh, but yeah, uh, I did update the Space Mountain queue. Space Mountain itself has the same layout. Um, it did, I think last time, last episode, it also had an Immelman. But the queue no longer goes way out here. It now stays in here. And, ooh, I need to finish that. Um, but yeah. And you get these little portholes into the landing zone. And yeah. The station also moved locations. So it's now over here. And the coaster rounds a bend, more like the one in Paris. Um, just. It makes more sense, and it compacts it this way, so it's not sticking out too far out here, and I can do some more with that land, maybe add another ride. But, yeah, I believe that is all that I have to say for this next update. Um, so, thank you for watching, I will see you next time, and I hope you enjoy, I will upload whenever I can. Uh, anyways, yeah, thank you for watching, I'll see you next time, hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.